Hey guys, I'm Joe. This is the Rebels Advocate. And let's talk about sex. Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things, all the bad things that may be. Let's talk about sex. Please tell me I didn't just cut away to a montage of me singing Let's Talk About Sex. So yeah, today we're going to talk about sex. No, this ain't a tutorial on how to do it. I'm probably not the guy to give that kind of advice. I just want to talk about sex in general. And why it's so weird. And so strange. And so taboo. You know, why do we make it weird? I mean, I understand Christians doing that. Or Muslims doing that. Or any other, you know, the Jews. Or any other religious group. I mean, they, they make a lot of shit weird. But why are we making it weird? It, it, why is it that it's like... Oh, it's so hard to talk to our kids about. Why is it? It's the most natural thing in the world. So I don't understand why we're making it so taboo and so hard to talk about, even with our own spouse sometimes. I'll be honest with you, I have problems with it too. Like, I, I can't talk about it that openly. It feels kind of embarrassing and get all giggly about it. And so... Like always, this ain't one of those videos where I'm telling you how it is and here's how you do it. Like, this is one of those videos where I'm like, yep, I have problems with this too. I'm working through it as I talk about it. I think one of the things that got me thinking about this initially was a few weeks ago or a month or two ago or whatever it was, uh, we got some tickets to go to the water park down at Dollywood Splash Country. And, of course, you know, you go in the water park, you're going to think about sex, huh? No, it was after we came out, and I was just, I was thinking about it, and I was thinking about, you know, some family and friends I have that are religious, and how, you know, we would like to brought them with it, because we had such a good time, it would have been, you know, it's like, hey, you know, it would have been really fun to have everybody come down there with us, but I realized we couldn't, because of the way they believe, uh, they couldn't be around people that was wearing any type of bathing suits you know I like because I guess you would have thought crimes you know if you're a man and you were to see a woman's bare back or some cleavage you know in her bikini you would immediately think about having sex with her I guess and and God don't like that too much and so you'd go to hell and so I was thinking man it I just think if I was in religion like I would have missed out on this. Out on a wonderful day we had, you know, just me, my wife, and my daughter. And it was so much fun because my daughter loves the water. And we got her out in that wave pool. She she loved to float down the lazy river, but when she got in that wave pool, man, we got her out on the deep end and she's just in her life jacket, just laying out on her back. And those waves would come and she'll, whoo. <laughs> and, I, and I would just kind of keep stay in front of her so she didn't whisk away too fast but she just absolutely loved it and it was so much fun that my wife and I was like man when we get our tax money back next year we're just gonna go ahead and get season tickets because that's something you know she loves the water so much and it's something we can always enjoy when it's hot man there's nothing better than getting the water but imagine if you were so weird about sex and so weird about the human body that you couldn't go somewhere like that because you were afraid of having thoughts and that was going to send you to hell and it, it, it's just so weird and, you know I told my wife like you know I just had a good time that day like and it's not to say that I'm walking around that water park and a beautiful woman walks by and I don't have a thought you know you know what I mean but here's the difference like the old me the religious me would have that thought and be like oh no like I thought about I thought about her, you know, beautiful body or whatever it is. Now I'm going to hell, you know. And then I would just dwell on it. Like, I would try to push that thought out so hard that it would make me dwell on it even more. And, like, to the point that's all I'm thinking about. Just trying not to think about it. And it would drive me crazy. And I literally, I knew some people growing up that this happened to. Like, it becomes such a thing with them. Like, they fought uh, bad thoughts so so hard that it was just that's all they could do all day you would see them they're just constantly like rebuking the devil like you know quietly like and 
like it was driving them mad i seen I, like i've seen it happen and and i know i would probably be one of those people and it's what happened to me as as like a teenager you know when your hormones are going crazy this was why i couldn't stay safe like i backslid and get saved it's because i would have these thought crumbs and i think oh no you know a thought that you can't even control enters your head and you try to push it out as quick as you can but you're like i'm going to go to hell for that now that's how the old me would have been the new me might see a woman might actually take notice you know, may have a thought that isn't the best thought to have right and then just let it go it just because it's not weird anymore you know what i mean like i don't really even think about it there's a lot of women walking around in bikinis uh and that's okay there's a lot of guys walking around in uh some skimpy shorts and i'm sure maybe my wife had the same you know thoughts like oh there's a good looking guy and then let it go and it's not even it's not even a big deal it's okay uh, and at the end of the day, we come out and we have these wonderful memories of this great day we had that we couldn't have had, you know, if I was as religious as what I grew up as. Also, I have this weird hypothesis, and I, I don't know if there's any correlation here or not, because... There's a lot of sex crimes, and, and, and the worst of being of which, you know, that you can think of is pedophilia, right? Anything involving kids is horrible. And so, I have this hypothesis, and there might not be nothing to it, but I wonder if the correlation means something. I, you know, I'm just curious, and this is just me wondering. I'm, I, I don't have any facts on this. But it just seems like the more taboo we make sex, and the weirder we make it, that it it causes we have this unhealthy view of sex and then what it produces is unhealthy sexual acts and there's no better example of this than the catholic church look at these priests who you know have such unhealthy views on sex they're not even supposed to be having sex and then look what happens you know is that a coincidence you know, or is there some correlation there? Does that correlation mean something? It, it's just, and you see things happen in the church, not just the Catholic church, but in the Protestant church here in America. You know, you see things happen. And I'm not saying every time a child is molested, it's because of religion. I'm not blaming everything on religion. But I do think sometimes an unhealthy view of sex will bring about unhealthy sexual uh, acts and and two outside of church think about a lot of times you hear people who abuse children and then later you find out they were abused as a child so a person who was abused as a child they're likely going to have very unhealthy view on sex and then as they get older it produces unhealthy sexual acts it like i said it's just a hypothesis i don't have any facts but it seems to make a lot of sense and it just makes me wonder why is everything like why do we make it so taboo it doesn't need to be it's so natural growing up you know one of the things you didn't talk about nobody ever talked about with me when i was growing up was masturbation uh-oh i said it isn't that awkward did you cringe a little bit you know you didn't talk about it. even some of my friends when we were younger you pretended like well I, I don't do that you know until you finally got smart enough to realize oh yeah we're all doing that you know and then you can talk about it more openly but wouldn't it be nice if some adult had set you down and, been, and had that talk with you and then brought up masturbation like hey this is kind of normal because the thing about it is you know they're going to do it so you shouldn't make you know a child and i know it's not going to be comfortable talking to your kid about that but you shouldn't make them feel like it's some odd thing like it's some dirty thing they're doing some unhealthy thing they're doing uh because that's definitely not healthy and that and this is where religion of course muddies the water again and screws everything up because how can you have that conversation with a kid if you're super religious it's hard because here's the thing 
here's what they know. They know it's kind of impossible to masturbate without having some thoughts again. And what sends you to hell quicker than anything? Yeah, thoughts. Thought crimes. And so, <laughs> I, I, I'm wondering how that would go if the church tried to, you know, if somebody religious was trying to have that talk and trying to tell their kid that it's okay to masturbate, but you can't think any thoughts, you know? I mean, of course you can't, you ain't gonna be able to watch porn, that would be no-no, but you can't even think, you know, about, you know, whether it be the opposite sex or same sex or whatever attra you're attracted to, you can't have any thoughts about that while you're doing it. Try to do that once, it's not possible. So therefore, they, you're just gonna say it's all wrong. Uh, don't do any of it. Just masturbation, I guess, is a sin at this point. There's even a scripture in the Bible like that a lot of Christians use to say it is a sin, which says, I, I can't remember the exact quote, it just come to my mind now, but something about it's better to bury your seed in the belly of a whore than to spill it on the ground. Something to that effect. That's be The Bible's beautiful, isn't it? It's so poetic. But, uh, it would be nice if people, for those of us who aren't super religious and don't have those hangups, maybe talk to your kid about that. When you're having the sex talk, maybe talk about masturbation and how, hey, this you're not a bad person for doing this. This isn't unhealthy. This isn't weird. This is 100% natural. Uh, maybe be discreet about it, but it's, it's gonna happen. You know, and, and the sex talk in general, you know, why is it so weird to have that? Like, trust me, I'm not looking forward to having that talk. And my daughter, it's likely going to be, you know, maybe my wife will take take on that responsibility where she might be able to talk to her a lot better, her being a woman. Uh, if we ever have a son, I guess it'll fall more on me. But if it came down to my daughter coming to me and asking me questions, you know, I don't... I don't think it should be weird for me to be able to answer my daughter. Uh, and how young do you start that? How young do you start that? I, you know, I'm not sure. I'm still figuring, my daughter's two and a half, so I still got a little ways to go. But what happens the first time my daughter looks at me and says, hey daddy, where do babies come from? Well, if she's like five years old, uh, I'm not gonna sit her down and have this elaborate sex talk, obviously. We don't need to describe everything. But I think it would be okay to tell her, hey, uh, babies come from mommies and kind of give a, a child version of how that happens. You know, when a mommy and daddy come together, they can make a baby. You don't have to go into detail how that's made. But, you know, kind of start laying some groundwork when they're young to where when she gets older, it's not really that weird. Uh, you know, we don't need to be telling our kids at a young age that a stork brings, you know, some magical bird brings a baby and drops it off at the back doorstep. You know, you know, and then when they grow up, they know you're lying to them. How are they ever gonna trust you? But I think it's easy to kind of maybe not tell the whole truth, but start telling little bits. You know, I just, I don't want to lie to my kid. When my kid asks me questions and she's curious about different things, then, I want to be able to answer her and not give her some BS, you know, answer uh, just because I'm a little embarrassed. And then, here's what I got to worry about later because I do have a daughter. What about when my daughter gets up a teenager, she gets up older, and then actual sex comes in, you know, that that's not something any dad likes to think about, right? But what I have to do, what I have to try to do is I have to try to raise my daughter the best way I know how and I have to believe and trust that she's gonna be you know a well-informed young lady she's gonna make good decisions and she's gonna make some bad ones just like I did growing up but I have to at some point I have to let go and I have to let her make her own decisions I have to let her be a grown-up so I know all these cute stories about the dad sitting on the back porch or the front porch with the shotgun. It, it's funny, I guess, to some people, but that can't be who I am in reality. I have to let go, and it ain't gonna be easy, 
but let my daughter find her own way. Make sure she's informed. Make sure that she has a healthy view of what sex is and she can make her own decisions and live her own life to the best of her ability. Not saying that'll be easy for me to do because I want her to be my little girl forever uh, and I don't want to think about her you know, even I don't even want to think about her growing up, let alone all those other things. But you can't make it so weird. You can't make it, it's, it's normal. And what I want for her more than anything is to be happy and to have a good life. So, you know, why would I, why would I hinder that by uh, not giving her answers when she's young? not talking to her, not being open with her about these subjects. Uh, all I'm doing is I'm hurting her in the long run. And then I wanna be that dad, I wanna be that dad who's like, you know, any girl that date, any any boy that dates my daughter, blah, 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 I'm gonna do this, you know. That ain't, that ain't who I wanna be, you know. If anybody ever hurts my daughter, I'll probably kill them, but I gotta trust that she's gonna make good enough decisions and and she'll take care of herself. But if she ever needs daddy, I'm here. But I guess I just I just had uh, that on my mind for the last few days about uh, talking about that. Why? Well, I've had it actually. I've had it on my mind for a while of like because I, I think about all the different scenarios of how I'm gonna handle things with my kid. As, it, as she gets older, you know, like, how am I going to handle when she first goes to school? How am I going to handle when she graduates? How am I going to handle when she leaves here? You know, uh, all different things like that. How am I going to handle if she gets bullied? How am I going to handle it if she turns out to be a bully? Uh, I would hope that would never happen. How am I going to discipline my baby girl? You know, all these things. I, I think about all these things, so of course that comes up and I've always wanted to be the kind of person who would answer my daughter when she has questions I hope my daughter's one of those uh, kids who has plenty of questions I always said I don't want to be the kind of person who tells her something and says because I said so I'd like to be the kind of dad that uh, if she says why I can sit down and say okay here's why here's here's what's here's what's going through my head and here's why I'm saying what I'm saying do you understand that and if not what, what, what's going through your head? What are you thinking? And I know some of you uh, parents who got older kids, you're looking at me, oh, how sweet. You think you got it figured out? I know. I know that a lot of this is going to be, holy crap, was I wrong? Was I foolish to think I was going to be? And I don't think I'm going to be that great of a dad, you know, like I got it all figured out. But I would like to be a great dad as far as how I try to be the best dad that I can. But anyway, uh, that's all I got to say about that, I guess, as uh, Forrest Gump would say. I'm Joe. This is Rebels Advocate. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, you can like, comment, share it, subscribe if you ain't already. Uh, if you want to become a patron, just like Brandon Shaw, you can do so at patreon.com slash therebelsadvocate. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll talk to you later.